Welcome back to the Prayer Ground Views YouTube channel. Today we're starting a three-part segment, session, whatever you want to call it, leading up to WandaVision, which drops on January 15th. So we're going to run through every single Marvel movie, 1 to 23, in the three phases. So this video is going to be the phase one video. We're going to talk about the first six movies from Iron Man 1 all the way down to Avengers, and then we're going to throw our phase rating at you right at the end. So to start us off, we're going to throw it to Nathaniel. This is his first time watching this movie to give us his detailed report of Iron Man. Okay, well, got to say, I really enjoyed the origin story of Iron Man. Didn't really know what it was. You know, I always knew him as just random dude, rich kid, can just kind of do whatever he wants. At least it was nice to see a humble beginning for him, you know, as a prisoner inside some random cave. Yep. Uh, Ego did not follow, did, was not so humble, but I mean... Overall, the movie was enjoyable. Um, I like seeing the iterations of his suit going from like the really sketchy metallic thing he built in a cave down to like the Mark II. The Mark II was pretty nice. I like the silver in that one. Yep. Um, overall, there's some nice uh, fight scenes and whatnot. It was nice to see how where he started because you know it was nice seeing all the fails for sure because yep. you know obviously you don't start at the top. You gotta work your way up there. Uh, I guess the only thing that really bugged me throughout the movie had to be Tony's attitude. I don't know. He was a bit too arrogant for my taste, but, you know, just, just the way his character is, there's not much I can really do about that. Totally agree. Yeah, I'd have to agree, too. It's it's one of my favorites. It's the second favorite out of Phase 1. I I love the movie since the first time I saw it in theaters. Actually, fun fact about that. First time I saw it in theaters, I was seven saw it with my mom left 15 minutes in it was kind of scary the terrorists were kind of scary so we went back a month later and we watched it again and that time i made it all the way through all the way through but yeah no love the love the movie yeah i thought it was it's a really good introduction to the phenomenon that is tony stark and we get some like nat said we get some pretty decent action scenes we also get a great mix of comedy as all three iron man movies provide it's it's pretty solid, pretty solid movie. I think I have it at number three for the face, but it's it's awfully close to that number two spot. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna start off and throw my favorite scene at you guys right now. I've got to say I've got two. I got two in my mind that are really close. One favorite scene number one. Just a heads up, we are going to spoil every single movie in the next ten to fifteen minutes, so just be aware of that. If you haven't seen them, go check them out and then come back. But favorite scene has got to be the testing scene where he goes from 1%, well, he starts 10% thrust and puts his classic hole through the roof and hits the cars and he's got about five nice cars lined up and he manages to heat sear every single hood. He's just freaking out. And I think he threatened, he must've threatened that robot 11 times in a three second scenario that he's gonna turn him into a, it's like seven different times the machines just make him totally useless. It's hilarious, very funny scene. And then I'm going to let Nathaniel go because I don't want to take anybody else's scene with my second one. But if you guys don't take it, I'll come back to Whoa. it. That's unfortunate because you already took my favorite scene. It was definitely the second scene. Yep. Because uh, I love seeing like, you no know, 10% thrust, complete overestimation. Like just messed up real bad. Yep. Um, I liked when he kept throwing dummy for sure of turning him into an experiment for the like local university. Yep. You know, it's great <laughs> to see how your life's work can be just shoved into a university for some random grad students, you know? Yep. Um, overall, just I was I like as an engineering student, really liked seeing all of the iteration and all the building and whatnot. Yep. So that was the main thing that really interested me. So is it me now? Yeah. Well, it can be yeah. if you're ready. Okay. If you're ready for us. <laughs> okay. I'm ready. So I kinda have two as well. Yep. I so my first one goes straight stereotypical it's definitely most iconic scene in the movie but yep that in press conference the truth is i am iron man got like no yep. superheroes didn't do that in movies like you don't like you got to protect it to protect the girl to protect your family but like nat said he's a little arrogant and he's like i'm taking the credit so yep. he is iron man and i just gotta say i still love that moment i quote it often Yep. That's a, that's a pretty, that's one of the, that's gotta be one of the most well-known scenes from that whole movie. Mm -hmm. And it definitely sums that. I think if you had to pick one scene, if you wanted to show somebody who's never seen any of the movies before, you wanted to show them one scene to describe 
Tony Stark, that's the one. That's the only scene you need. Sure. And you get like six words, entire character right there on display. And then what was the what was the second one, Sebastian? For me, I'd have to actually say, going into spoiler spoilers, the post credit scene, that first post credit scene. Mr. Stark, you've become part of a bigger world. You just didn't know it yet. I love Nick Fury's coming in. I'm here to talk to you about the Avengers initiative. It yep. sets it up. No, no movies had done that either. There was no universe. You had yep. a sequel and a sequel to the sequel and maybe a spinoff, but they didn't connect. There was references, but they didn't connect. Yep. There was none of this trying to make this entire universe, but that post credit scene, that was like, no, we're doing something different. Yep. Something you've never seen before. Yep, exactly. Open up. And the I gotta world. say, twenty-three mi- movies later, it's it's a success. It's doing okay, hey. Not too bad. Yeah. Well, For surprisingly, sure. nobody took my second favorite scene, so I'm gonna spit it out. Coming out of the cave. Mark one, all over the place. Fantastic. Oh, that's His landing one. wasn't so that's smooth, but you get a lot of really solid action, back to back to back to back. You kind of get to see the true capabilities of the suit before it's really, really what it becomes, right? It's still, still a prototype yeah. almost, but it's still insanely powerful and did the job quite well. So that was, that was my favorite, probably my favorite action scene from the whole movie. So, alrighty. Anybody else got any little tidbits they want to, want to drop on anybody, any pertinent information before somebody goes and checks out that movie? Oh, um, just a fun fact, the actor who played Obadiah Stane did mention, I've seen in an interview that for that first Iron Man, a lot of it was not written in the script. They did ad lib a lot and make did up they? a lot on the fly. So, so that's just, that makes that movie all the more special when you think that it spawned this entire universe and it was being made up at the day they were filming sometimes. Yep. So. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, actually this one, yeah, this one does rank third. So we gave we gave Iron Man an 8.8 out of 10 for the first Iron Man. So it was pretty good movie. There was not a, not a whole lot you could critique it on. It does a lot of things really well. And it sets up, like Sebastian said, the entire universe doesn't exist without this movie. So after, after a very important connected movie, we roll straight into the arguably the least important movie in the entire franchise, The Incredible Hulk. Sebastian absolutely adores this movie. Adores it. So I'm going to throw it straight to him again because, you know, got to give the man his favorite movie. So this is basically the black sheep of the universe for the biggest reason being the recasting of Bruce Banner in the Avengers. So a lot of people don't even realize this counts because it has a different actor and there had already been a Hulk movie before this and this. One. So they, they don't even realize this counts half the time. It's it's very, it's not really connected to the rest. It's tonally different than most of them. Yep. It's got some similar stuff, but otherwise it's kind of tonally different. Um, uh, it has one or two, I, I'd say two decent action scenes. And other than that, I do not particularly enjoy this film. It has a few moments, but otherwise this this isn't one I'll che- I check out often, if yeah. ever, so. Yep, that's that's fair. All right, I guess it's my turn. Um, I never well, most of these movies, I gotta say, these were all my first time watching, so most of these thoughts are like first impressions. So I say the first thing that caught my mind: Blonsky's accent. Accent, really liked his accent. I don't know why. I just like to hear him talk. It's pretty satisfying. I also gotta say, uh. As all Marvel movies do, they must blow up half a city in every single fight they do. I don't know why or how or where the city gets their money to rebuild after every single major conflict. I don't know. They fight like one enemy and like blows up half the city. Um, gotta say, uh, the movie was weird for a superhero movie because it didn't really feel like Hulk was a superhero the whole time. He was kind of a menace until the end where the military messed up big time as they usually do in all these movies. I don't know, the military seems kind of useless, to be honest. But anyways, yeah, he wasn't really a superhero until they messed up and they had some, needed someone to clean up after them. But overall, I guess it was just a lot slower of a movie. And I didn't yeah. really enjoy it as much as the others. But overall, still an okay movie if you just watch it as a one-off. Yeah, yeah. yeah I totally agree. I think 
I think this movie does a lot better if it connects back into sort of the flow we see in phase one or if the characters carry over or stuff like that, right? If it doesn't feel like it feels like a one-off, even from the very beginning. Iron Man feels like it's got, there's more to it. It's going to connect in, right? This movie truly feels like a one-off. We have a couple characters, including the general, that sort of come back and they phase themselves back in later on. But I think the disappearance of that that actor straight off the bat just about puts this one in the in the dirt before it really gets going. And like Sebastian said, there's a lot of people who don't even realize that it's it's part of the universe just because of that gap and because of the original movie as well. Sort of alienates alienates that thing. And it's it's kinda of unfortunate because Hulk is one of those characters that we really could have almost used as we get later on in this series, we could have really used a backstory, a good backstory movie of where he came from, right? That sort of that sort of pertinent information and all those all those unknown unknown mm-hmm. factors that sort of lead us to know a little bit less about Hulk in the Avengers and also in movies to come. So this one could have done could have done a couple of things better. It wasn't a bad movie as a one off, but yeah, I'd have to agree with that totally. Favorite scene, Nathaniel? What are we thinking? Um, okay, there's a few. First favorite scene you gotta say um, was that lovely taxi ride like right after a major fight that happened on campus. It was really great watching the guys zip around and Betty freaking out, even though, you know, it was, it was nice comedic relief after such a tense scene. Yep. And that leads to my, probably like more, more favorite scene was watching Hulk duke it out against the military in that uh, campus. Um, it was really nice to see how strong he was and just, you know, his full extent of his power and how useless the military is. I don't know why they try doing this all the time, you know, make weapons and stuff that they can't control. Whatever. It's what it is. It is what it is, but it was just really nice to see him just, like, beat the crap out of everything. Yep. Oh, my turn. Uh, <laughs> so, for me, I'd have to say, for this one, it's the final fight between the Hulk and Abomination. Um... I just felt like Abomination is his like equal in strength in terms of villains, and yep. it was it's a fun it was a fun fight overall, and it's one of the I, if not the only time we actually hear Hulk say Hulk smash, especially in Phase One. Yep. So, uh, it was uh, the way he defeated him using his smash was awesome. I thought it was it was pretty it was pretty it was a pretty good fight overall, and that was probably my most enjoyable part of the movie. Yeah, that's fair. I think my my favorite scene links a little bit back into where where Nathaniel's scene happens, but I think my favorite scene's got to be the one where Hulk saves Betty from the chopper rolling through the grass. It's one and it's super cool action scene, and it also gives us a little bit more of an insight into Hulk as a character, right? More than just Bruce Banner and the fact that he still has. He's an angry mess all the time, but he still has that little bit of humanity and a little bit of control of, okay, this person is very important to me. I got to protect her at all costs, regardless of what happens to me, right? That's sort of an insight into Hulk that we don't see in the first half of the movie where you could argue that he, when he turns, he loses all sense of humanity entirely, right? So I thought that was a really cool touch there about halfway through, a little bit more than halfway through, so... Final thoughts, final thoughts, going once, going twice. But, uh, we are not sold on that movie, but we are sold on this discussion. <laughs> so that one leveled out the absolute bottom of the bottom of phase one with a 7.2. Lowest movie by 1.3 points. It just, it had, I think, personally, in my opinion, it had a lot of potential. It just didn't, didn't turn it over, which is why it fell into the basement. So... Now it's time to turn to Nathaniel's favorite character once again. We're back. Iron Man 2. So. Ah, uh, yes. Mr. Tony Stark. Yes. I thought um, this was I'm a pretty good you. movie. I'm taking Nathaniel's fire. I thought this was a pretty Sweet. decent movie. It's, I like Iron Man 1 more, to be quite honest with you. But this is just, this is just another step down that path. And it's, it's really cool. We get a lot of good action scenes. It's, it's a little bit more focused on Iron Man than the first one was, if that makes any sense. But yeah. like Iron Man 1 is like origin story. Iron Man 2, we get a look at, okay, this is Iron Man now, right? Tony Stark, Iron Man, which was big for me. I enjoyed it. It was a fun movie. We get a lot of action and we get some, we get some interesting villains too. So I enjoyed it. 
Nat, what you got? Yeah, I. Oh, I mean, Seb, you can go ahead. It's fine. Doesn't matter to me. Okay. Okay, I'll go. Um, so I, I, I think I like this movie too. I, I think it's got some pretty good action. It's, it's got um, like you said, some interesting villains. Uh, Hammer is funny. Uh, yep. He gets some good com- comedy out of just being a Tony Stark wannabe. Uh, I think that the whole like Tony, he part of his plot in this is that he's dying, and um, I just the watching him kind of like not have any personal will to live for a bit was kind of an interesting di- take on the character for a while, and then seeing his redemption, how he comes back. And his comeback story there, I really enjoyed that, and it comes along with some great scenes and some great action. So it's yeah, it's a good movie. Absolutely. I see. I guess my turn. Um, first off, I say, as Seb said, Hammer is a bit of an idiot. I don't know what he was trying to do throughout that movie. He was trying to act smarter than he was. I don't know. He made some very questionable decisions. But I think I think one of my more favorite villain has to be like Anton. Anton's a cool guy. Uh, he had the brains to match Tony, not necessarily the resources, but he still did like really well no. for what it's worth. Like his introduction scene on that racetrack, man, those whips, freaking awesome. Love yep. those things. Yep, absolutely. Um, yeah. it, was, it was, it just showed like a good dichotomy between like what power and like money can give you compared to like if you had the same opportunities, but if you didn't have the resources, Yep, which is really cool. Um, gotta say, Anton played Hammer real well throughout the movie, you know. <laughs> Like, I don't, I don't know what that guy was trying to do. Hammer is just, just I don't know. It was, it was great. It was fun. Yep. Um, I say those drones at the end of the movie when the, and during the final fight seat. I say, I don't know why they didn't try to, like, the U.S. military didn't try to, you know, take over that tech again. But, you know, they were, they worked. They were really, like, impressive units. They can yep. totally be tweaked for the better. But they were, like, I don't know, I really enjoyed watching that fight scene. And uh, as usual, things get blown up and cities get blown apart. As all Marvel movies go. Yep, absolutely. Yes. Got to agree. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw the funniest scene out there. You two can come up with the best action one. But personally, I think the funniest scene, and it's a reflection of how much of a fantastic character Hammer is and how much of a genius he is, when War Machine goes to shoot Anton with the hammer rocket, comes up, whoosh, and it just like oh, bounces yes. off him and hits yes. the ground like he shot him with a pencil. Yes. I was I was like. That was incredible. That was fantastic. That was your selling point to trade the Iron Man replica for that. And it was just basically a piece of metal that flew out and did absolutely nothing. I was like, great, our movie's not over yet. Um, so if I'll take an action scene and, uh, and I have an emotional scene as well, one sure. of the, especially in phase one. Yep. So for the action scene, just that final fight, War Machine and Iron Man versus the drones and then Anton, it's just, I love the way they work together because War Machine, well, it is adjusted by Hammer. Later movies, it'll be adjusted by Tony. But um, just the way that they, they have this, they all, they have similar weapons, but they have different weapons and they both have their strengths and weaknesses yep. in terms of fighting. It, it's a really good tag team. I like seeing them fight together. And for the emotional scene, I'd say it's actually one of the most emotional scenes in phase one, if not let alone like the series. But um, when Tony watches the clip of his dad and he says, my uh, greatest creation is you. Just Tony's reaction to that. And I just think that's a really great scene. Yeah. I'm going to have to dispute the most emotional scene in the series. That one. That one's probably second or third. I said phase. Oh, I thought you said series at the end, too. Yeah. Iron Man. I said phase or maybe series. Iron Man is definitely the most emotional scene, though, in the whole series. But that comes later. Phase three. Here we go. Nat, what do you got for us? Yeah. Uh, favorite scene. I think I like the fight between Iron Man and War Machine, like, right, like, um, when Tony, during his party. And it was nice. It was really funny watching drunk Tony try to fight something, his own creation. It's great. It was a really funny scene. Yeah. And to link to that, watching Drunk Tony before that, he was even better. Because the guy has given up all hope. He was yep. there for a good time, not for a long time. So he made the most out of it. Yeah, he had lost all will to really do anything. He was just like, okay, I'm done. 
we're going to have, we're going to enjoy this and that's it. That'll be the end of it. So I guess it is worth noting that um, Rhodes changes actors from the first one mm -hmm. to the second one. We do have mixed opinions on that, but it's not a, it's not a bad change. So he's still, still the same, relatively the same character. It doesn't change that much other than the actor. So he's a, he's a half decent, half decent secondary character in this one. And I think, I think they did a good job of that. And he will be getting his own Disney Plus show eventually. It's been announced. It's called yeah. Armor Wars. I think it's coming out 2022 or 2023. But um, yeah, so that'll be cool because he'll finally get his chance in the spotlight. And we'll see. Yep. We'll get to dive a little bit more into that character, which I sort of wish we had done a little bit more. But I digress. Yeah. We'll get it. We'll get it eventually. It'll come. Yeah. So that one. Even though, even though we all relatively liked it, that one did finish second last with an 8.5 out of 10. So a little bit lower than the first one, which I think is fair, right? It was, it was good, but that, that first one is just, it holds all the chips, right? It almost holds mm -hmm. all the chips for this entire phase. So final thoughts on Iron Man 2? Drunk Tony the best. I agree with that. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. He's funny. Is, absolutely, absolutely. We move a little bit down the road to a, uh, a new universe, Asgard. Thor, number one. So, Seb, first thoughts? Or maybe that way. I don't know. Um, I, I've, I, it's a good movie. I remember seeing the post credit scene in Iron Man 2 and being so hyped because I recognized the hammer from the comics. And I remember calling my dad, because me and my mom saw it in theaters, and calling him on the way home and being like, yeah, I can't wait till you see this post credit scene because like it'll yep. be it's gonna be hype. And then I just like how it's it sets itself apart from the Iron Man movies. It feels different, but it also feels like it fits in a way that I kind of felt like Incredible Hulk tried but failed to do. It's it's different, but it fits. It's got good characters, it's got good world building, it's got it plays into the mythology of both Marvel's versions of Asgard and, and these Norse gods and like the real versions of the Norse gods. And, and um, no, it's, it's got some good action. It's got some funny moments, good characters. Chris Hemsworth does a really good job starting out here as Thor. He, he really sets himself as a good character and yeah. Absolutely. Sweet, my turn. Um, first thing I gotta say is I always enjoy like mythology and history and whatnot. Yep. So having a Marvel movie based on Norse mythology, pretty darn sick, gotta say. Um, I really liked how this uh, movie had like almost like nothing to do with Iron Man. It was like as if it was like a good standalone movie that can be linked into the rest of the universe, and like how they introduced a lot of good characters that actually like were actually developed properly. So they weren't just like here, there, you know, in and out. Yeah. Gotta say, Loki is amazing in this movie. I don't know. I just love all the deceptions he did. Yep. Because it, it fits his character. It's like what he is. Yep. And who he is. So it just makes so much sense. Absolutely. Um, I gotta say, I like how Thor started off kind of similar to Tony in a way that they were both like high egos, pretty arrogant. Yeah. But Thor actually had development and learned how to be worthy again of Mjolnir, obviously, because he wasn't able to pick it up when he got to Earth. Yep. So it was nice to see him have a greater change of character compared to during Iron Man. Yep. I just overall really enjoyed this movie. Yeah, I think I have to agree with almost all those points. It was, it was really nice to see a movie with, like, I'd almost say four characters, at least, at least four, that could stand on their own feet, right? You didn't have character identity locked into another character, right? You had four solid characters that we knew quite a bit about and that developed over the course of the movie individually that you could sit here and go, okay, I could I could write another movie or another show about Loki. I could write, and they did, write another movie or two about Thor, right? And even Jane totally stands on her own feet, right? Which is fantastic. She's one of the best characters in this movie outside of those main two, main two Loki and Thor, right? And then we get some pretty sweet action. The Destroyer is awesome. Fantastic. Probably my favorite part of the whole movie is watching that thing just tear through. Not a big city this time, Nathaniel. It's a little town. Nice. A little town. I mean, a they, little they, town. Like, burned it to the ground, though. So I don't know if that's any better, right? That thing's not coming back. Like, yeah. Wow, well, yeah. they can rebuild. Eventually. Shield's got, Shield's got lots of money. Years. Shield's got lots of money. <laughs> Lawsuits coming out. True enough. Coming out of every, every pore. But 
yeah, I really, yeah. I really enjoyed this one. This was one of one of my favorites for sure. And Thor is like you said, Nathaniel, that like we see all the way up, and then he just sort of gets brought down, and he manages to build himself back up, right? But in with a little bit different building blocks, less less the arrogant, cocky side, more the understanding of, hey, humans aren't scum. Totally. Sometimes. Occasionally. <laughs> We're okay sometimes. I promise. Um, sometimes. Yeah, that's that's what all I got for that one. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. I guess. Oh, we haven't oh, we gone over our favorite scenes yet. Yes, yep. we have not yet. Nope. No. Um, now well, you want to start Austin us off? Gave his. Yeah, kind of I would. I, I would. Fair. I would say mine. I'd say mine is the destroyer. Yeah, that whole that whole entire action scene is probably the best one in the movie, and definitely my favorite throughout. Ooh. I like. Uh, I think my favorite scene is when uh, Heimdall like, comes out of the ice, and like when Thor and them break. The, the pathway. I gotta say yep. that looked really nice. It was nice to see the change in everyone because like at that time Loki was king, questionable, but he was. And then Heimdall being like, Yeah, no, you're not my king. And then <laughs> as soon as that was not established, he like attacked him. Yeah. Uh, I thought that was really cool. It was nice to see that character. I don't know, I really wanted to, I've always wanted to see that character in action since we introduced him to being in the movie. To see him like kick butt against the frost, frost giants was like really satisfying. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Seb? Yeah. Um, for me, it has to be Thor when he becomes worthy finally to, to wield yep. Mjolnir again. When he tries to fight the Destroyer to protect the town, Jane, his friends, and his full redemption arc is for this film is complete. He, he became the man who is worthy to lift the hammer. Yep. And he became the man who could be a king of Asgard one day. And just the way the hammer comes, it, he catches it because he's basically near dead. He catches it, and then it all comes back, and he's, yeah, he's awesome. So, yeah, I love that scene. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. Anything else? Anybody got any Easter eggs, fun moments? This was a, this was a decently funny movie at points, too, oh. which, I, which I enjoyed. Yeah. Um, the character of Darcy yes. from this. Will be in WandaVision. Ooh. She's in WandaVision. Oh, interesting. interesting. Do we know? I don't know how she works in necessarily, but she's in. Do we know how that plays? Do we know how that plays in or not yet? Not yet. Okay. That'll be that'll be interesting how that connects back in, but that's a fun little detail. Fair enough. Fair enough. Alrighty. So Thor. Put your guesses in now. Throw them in the comments before we reveal it. 8.7 out of 10. So right in the middle, actually. Right in the middle of our six. So it wasn't bad. It's a pretty good movie. Not quite. Not quite at the top of the top, but it was still good. Next, second last movie in the phase. Arguably one of the best. Captain America, the first Avenger. Seb, what'd you think? Cap is a character. He's the man you want to be. Just... Cap as a character is what brings this movie home. It's that, it is that loyalty. It is that courage. It is that will to do the right thing to a fault. It is that I'm just a kid from Brooklyn. Like, yep. just that mentality, just his duty, his sense of honor. Like Cap as a character is what makes this movie so great to me. Just the way he interacts off people, the respect he earns through his actions. Yep. And of course, I love a good, period piece and of course Cap's origin starts in World War II so it is great to see that time period and just him taking on the Red Skull it's it's got yep. some great it's got some great action Cap's not as humorous as some of his other hero counterparts but he still has some moments and the film as a whole has some moments so yeah yep totally now what'd you think well I gotta say it's nice to see I guess pretty much the polar opposite of Tony the uh, literally the nice, selfless, like courageous man who started from literally nothing and became like a war hero. Essentially, he like saved. I mean, honestly, I guess my main point is that like Hydra is like really, like really strong in this movie. Yeah, I'm surprised. Totally. If I mean, I feel like if they executed their plans a lot sooner, they probably would have won the war. They would have like taken over the world, honestly. Yep. Um, it was unfortunate that uh. What was his name? The doctor was able to inject um, Steve with the serum. Yeah. I guess lucky for them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because without that, they would have been. They would have been done in trouble. Toast. 
totally. gotta say, oh, I guess this goes into my favorite scene, but I'll talk about that later. Just overall, it's just nice to see World War II pretty, like portrayed in a Marvel movie. It's yep. Not something you'd expect to see all the time. Not necessarily. You know, with, when you think superheroes, you think present day, future, you never think past. Yep. So overall, it's just a really enjoyable movie to watch. Yeah, I gotta agree. I think this is this is almost my favorite movie in the whole phase. I I'm more of a Sebastian's more of an Iron Man guy than a Captain America guy, but I am I am Cap all the way. This movie's good. Solid characters, great plot. Like you guys have said, it's really cool to go into that past setting, right? And then the way it flips forward, the 70 years, right? Because like it feels a little bit discombobulated for the first hour and a half from the rest of the series. You sort of sit there going, how is this? How does this work? How do we end up yeah. like 80 years from now, right? How is that going to, how are we going to get to Tony Stark, right? But then it connects back in a way that makes sense. It's not, it's a little bit far-fetched, but it's not too far out there that you're sitting there like, really? Did that just happen, yeah. right? Like, did, are we serious, right? Like, it, it fits. It's, it's, it's a little bit out there, but it fits, right? So I enjoyed it. I got to say, my favorite scene, ooh, that's a tough one. The emotional one where Bucky falls off. That's got to be my, that's got to be my scene of the movie. Yeah. It's a tough one to watch, but that's got to be my favorite one. Nat, what are you thinking? I think my favorite scene, um, I guess the opening to the chase scene when Agent Carr like, shoots that one guy with a pistol in a moving target. Man, I don't know. She has a good shot. Um, yeah. just a really enjoyable like, take out right there. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, for me, and also Austin, though I'm an Iron Man guy, I do have a Cap phone case. So he is second. He, I do love my man Cap. But my favorite scene is a scene that I figure – encapsulates Cap the same way that the I am Iron Man scene encapsulates Iron Man. And it's when he jumps on the grenade, the, the decoy grenade. Yep. Cause he's skinny. He's, he's not, he doesn't have the serum yet. He would die and, but he doesn't care. And there's a bunch of guys who've been treating him like crap the whole time. And he still jumps on that grenade to protect them. Yep. He still is trying to get everyone sa to safety. He's like, get back. And he just, that's just him. That's just him. He'd jump on a grenade for anyone. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah, fantastic movie. Second second from the top with an 8.9 out of 10. Solid movie. Great characters. I think we all really enjoyed it. And it leads us into the big movie. Big movie of the entire phase, Avengers. So, this is this is the best movie. We get all the characters. Sebastian's antsy over there to talk about it because he loves this movie. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cool his jets a little bit. I'm going to make him go third here. So, um, I really enjoy this movie. I love the fact that we get to see, like, personally, if you've played the Avengers game that just came out, PS4, Xbox One, this is what we should have seen, right? The fighting together, right? Everybody working in sync. We get some cool action scenes all together. We also get some really cool action scenes almost individually of each different character doing different things with their abilities. It's fantastic. But it does a really good job of holding a plot, right? Sometimes we worry that we're going to see an action-based movie that really doesn't have a meaning other than just you're out here killing Shatari, right? But it does a really good job of holding its form and prolonging the story, moving into phase two and connecting back phase one and bringing the characters together in a way that doesn't feel cliche, cheesy, or predictable, right? So I love this movie. Best one of the whole phase, in my opinion. And with that, I am going to throw it to not Sebastian. Go ahead, Nat. All right. I guess the main thing I really like about this movie is like seeing a progression of their of the character interactions. Because when you think the Avengers, you think of like a like a nice cohesive team. But when they started off, they were never a team. You can see there's a lot of infighting. I mean, technically, I guess that doesn't ever let up. But anyways, besides the point, see how conflicting ideals like fighting each other. Got to say that like Tony and Cap, complete opposite to each other. I guess you consider them like foils essentially. It was nice to see them work together to save the ship yep. when everything was going going downhill, essentially. Yep. <laughs> going down, yep. <laughs> uh, I guess um, I guess you can have your turn now. I guess you can have your you can have your limelight. Okay, so um, for those of you, most of you will be unaware, this is one of my favorites, not just of the phase, but of the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe. I This is probably the film I have watched more than any other. I, overall... Um, I, I love this film. It's got great interactions. I love seeing these heroes team up and 
just interact off each other the way they have their emotions and they talk and they fight and they that's something you saw in comics and the animated TV shows that were that I watched when I was younger. Never thought I'd see that in a movie. Yep. So seeing that in a movie was amazing. And it had all my favorite characters. It was just something to behold. And it's got a great third act that I'll never, ever forget. Yep. Yep. That 36 minutes, straight action, straight fighting. And it's entertaining for the whole thing. Whether you're an action mm-hmm. junkie or not, it's got everything for you there's even a couple comedic moments thrown in there that'll make you chuckle so with that we're going to roll straight into our final thoughts on what the best scene of this movie was and go so my favorite scene in the movie is a pretty easy typical one it's just the circle shot i mean leading up to that of course the whole scenario with that's my secret cap I'm always angry. Punching the, the Leviathan, yeah, that's the term, and Tony shoots it, and then they're all, the Jatari all screaming, and you see the Avengers united, all of them at last. They're all, they're all together. They're in that circle. The Hulk screaming at them, or at the Jatari. I just love that shot, love that scene. It gives me goosebumps every time. Absolutely. Nat, what you got for us? I guess my favorite scene is when Loki, like, um, tricks Thor into being stuck inside the containment chamber. I gotta say that was it was nice to see. It was, it was a really funny like motion uh, moment to see because it shows how much madman Loki is to go yep. against the Avengers just like that. You know, straight up does not care, fight all of them. Like he like had them all calculated, all planned, took them all down very easily too. Gotta yeah. say, and if they ever if they never got over their infighting, they would have been screwed. Yep. Um, and yes, that that also led to the death of Coulson, which was very unfortunate. I like the dude, but uh, I guess he had to go. Yep. Yeah, it's unfortunate. You can check him out in Agents of Shield for I want to say five seasons. Seven. Seven. I was yeah, I was close. I was close. I gotta say yeah, it was Loki did a fantastic job throughout the movie. This is one of the parts I enjoyed the most of keeping them separated. And if he keeps them separated the whole movie, he probably wins. If he keeps them bickering at each other, it's game over, right? But I got to say, my favorite scene of the whole movie is the nuke scene. Where Tony puts his ego aside, puts all his natural characteristics to the side, and takes this nuke and flies it into the middle of absolutely nowhere with a fairly good chance of dying to save everybody else, right? It's a completely different side of Tony. We don't see very much of in phase one at all. And it was kind of cool to watch every single Chitari just yeah, and die as their one central brain shut off permanently. So, and that was the winning, that was the winning move. That was your checkmate. So I enjoyed that quite a bit. It was a very satisfying end to that 36 minutes of just jam packed action. Loved it. Seb, you got any final thoughts on your favorite movie of all time? it's not my favorite but it's up there it's favorite marvel or second favorite marvel but it's up there it's up there but anyways no just great movie some awesome action great interactions i mean like you said they set that up earlier with with cap's line or for your favorite scene they set that up earlier with cap's line you're not the man to make the sacrifice play to lay down on the wire and let the other guy climb over you like Tony's like, nah, I'm going to make the sacrifice play. This this carries on through phase two and three. Tony yep. does start to uh, put the hero side of himself first. Yep. Um, uh, but I just, no, I've, I love this movie. I've loved this movie since I was 11 and I saw it in theaters. I'll probably love this movie till my dying breath. So, Fair enough. good movie. Fair enough. I think I'm going to add, before I throw you the rating at you guys, I'm going to add one thing. We see two occasions of that, throwing somebody else's words back in your face. But the second one, you have to think back a little bit. Because what what does Thor say to Loki as Loki's talking about ruling the earth? He throws the whole, you wouldn't make a good leader. You're not ready for the throne. The throne's got to think about, you can't see yourself as higher than your subjects, which are the words. It's paraphrased, but it's darn close to the words that Odin throws in Thor's face right before he tosses him out, right? And I yeah. just 
I, I love that little that little tribute, whether it was intentional or not, although knowing this universe and these writers, it it's for probably. sure was. Everything, every, there's not a, not a thing in this universe that isn't without purpose. You learn that really quickly. But that was, I love that too. Perhaps. So with that being said, this is our highest movie, in case you didn't get that. Solid 9.2 out of 10. Great movie, great characters, fantastic action. And it was unlike anything we've ever seen in that day and age. So unless anybody else has got any other thoughts on any of the movies, to be quite honest with you, I'm going to give the, um, give the phase one rating. We didn't mention at all, but of course, all you Marvel fans know that every single one of these movies has a good old Stanley cameo. It does. He they all do. works Fantastic. his way into every single one of them. And they're, they're all pretty, they're all pretty good. I, I do like his one in the Avengers and Iron Man one or two where he, where is Hugh Hefner? I can't remember. Which one. one. Iron Man one. One. Yeah. And that one is also a really good scene. So, yeah. yeah. Fair enough. Nat, you got anything? Any big final thoughts? Yes. I mean, just for the Avengers movie, love seeing when Hulk ragdolled Loki and oh, yeah. like Stark Towers. Boom, boom. That was, yep. that was great. That was a wonderful scene. Yep. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect way to end that little segment. Mm -hmm, for sure. Well, phase one is complete. Six movies, all pretty decent. Hulk dipped off a little bit, but the rest of them, smooth sail in the whole way. Solid 8.5 out of 10. For the phase, I truly believe this could have been a lot higher if you don't have Hulk in there, but it is what it is. We're dealt, dealt the cards were dealt with these movies, and we look forward to phase number two. So we will be back in a matter of less than a week with phase two, and then phase three following, leading up to January 15th with WandaVision, which will be every single week for, I'm not six doing weeks. six weeks. So we got six episodes of that. So be sure to check back for that too. Thanks for watching. Make sure you ring that bell for notifications and subscribe for more videos like these, some reviews. We also have some gaming content coming up very soon for you to enjoy. So be sure to check all that out and we will see you next time.